Hey everybody, and today we're going to do a quick board repair video. Well, actually it's not much of a repair, more of a kind of a description of a fault and what can cause it and also how to work your way around fixing it. So behind me on the monitor, I have a Gauntlet 2 board that's uh, playing nicely now uh, after a repair. So what I thought I'd do is do it in reverse and show you exactly what the problem was with it. And this is more of a cautionary tale of making sure you read the schematics and follow the instructions and try and replace part for part rather than upgrading or downgrading parts. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't as I found out during the course of this repair. Anyway, so I'm gonna flip the camera around, show you the board, show you the issue and explain what the heck's going on. So here on the bench we have a Gauntlet 2 board, which looks like it's absolutely fine and dandy and running. And it is now, now that I've fixed it. And the problem was all basically down to a simple fault, but it had me chasing me tail for a little while. Now, the board was starting up and it was playing the game absolutely fine and initialising everything, except there was no music, there was some, uh, in fact actually there's no music, no effects, no, um, no anything on this one. The sound section, according to schematics, and having found it, is all down here in this corner. It's controlled by a 6502 CPU of its own. Uh, there is some memory addressing logic here. There are two EEPROMs here which have sound data and probably sound program code in. I haven't debugged the code to find out what's going on. Two RAM chips, because you're going to need uh, RAM to run with any CPU to do anything with. A uh, Pokey chip, which is Atari's custom chip, which uh, generates sounds and also connects as a random number generator and you've seen other videos where that's been at fault and been the cause of various issues. Um, there is a YM2151 chip here which is a synthesizer chip. Uh, there is a TMS uh, chip here, I can't read the number off it from this distance. Uh, let's see if we can just zoom in a little bit, there you go. It's a TMS, TMS uh, 5220, uh, can't remember exactly what the description of that is, but it's all part of the sound section. You've got a YM31 chip here, which acts as a, I think it acts, it's acting as a buffer out into the main sound output, and then you've got an LM324N, which is an op-amp chip, and then a few more LM324s, which then migrate all the way towards, towards the sound, and the sound is being fed out of a custom jam a rig here and through this connector up to my speakers up on the top there so anyway that's enough of the description of the sound section so what was happening with this board was it was not booting the sound section so the game was playing absolutely fine everything over here forget about it was working absolutely beautifully down here the sound section wasn't working now it all comes down to these two ram chips over here or at least it did on this particular occasion now they are HM6116P2 chips and what was in the board were these. These are AM91280 tens. Now they're both 6116 series. Now if you don't know what a 6116 series chip is, um, it's a RAM chip. Uh, it will hold uh, 8 bits of data instead of using the 214 uh, 2144 type chips, 2 or 4 8s, uh, which only on 4 bits of data. So this is an 8-bit data chip, 8-bit RAM. Uh, I think this is a 1K or, yeah, 1K 8-bit RAM or something like that. Uh, <laughs> you'll have to excuse my description of this because um, you need to get some background theory, obviously, in your head before you start messing around with this stuff. But I just wanted to point out a sound. So if you come across it, you're probably going to be able to fix it reasonably easily. So I'm going to pop the other two chips back in. The sound is working absolutely spot on. So if I start a game, so there you go. Sound working absolutely fine on it now. I'm going to turn it off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these other two RAM chips back in and show you what happens. All right, so just give me a second. And there you go by the miracle of uh, pressing the pause button on the camera. There's the RAM swapped over. So the two that are working RAMs are in there. Now you're going to say to me, so I'm going to fire this up, okay? Um, what you're going to get is sound momentarily, or no sound. Sometimes it starts, sometimes it doesn't. And you, I don't know if you can hear it, but there's a very high-pitched whine going on. Seriously inaudible. So what I'll do is I'll find the button to switch us over into test mode, which is here. You get your white screen. And 
and it'll go through that and you've got your switch test and they all do what they're supposed to do and that side does that and I haven't got four joysticks loaded up so I'm going to carry on through this forget all these screens here there's a play field test, motion object, character arm, colour test background, convergence etc so you can align your monitor up and here we go, sound CPU oh, sound CPU, RAM 1 and RAM 2, error so that's the first part that I came across when trying to fix or try to look at what was wrong with this board so I always triage these boards and if it's within my means to fix it, you know, if it's a simple fix or I can track it down reasonably quickly within, say, an hour or so, then I'll do it. Now, if I can't, there are experts on hand who I can send things over to and they will sort it out for you. So, um, Market Retro Click being one of the uh, one of the more prominent people that uh, I send, uh, send boards off to to get things uh, sorted out. All right. So there you go. You're going to sound CPU RAM 1 error. Now, the first thing you'd think is, well, hang on a minute. OK, so if it's going to be RAM... Let's get the logic probe out. Is the CPU initialising all that sort of thing? Well, I did all that, and everything was fine and fine, absolutely fine. So I came to these two RAMs, and what I did was, thought, well, I have a RAM tester over here. Ta -da! Part of my uh, IC system, IC root burner. So I whip, I whip the ROMs out, and I'll test them in the thing. I'll show you what happens there. Okay, so here is. Uh, my ROM tester and RAM tester set up here on the PC that I keep next to the bench and I've selected a 6116 RAM now what I've done is I've taken it out of the board as you can see I've only taken one one chip out of the board because I know exactly what's going to happen here and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hit the test button and it's going to tell me that it's normal and this is where you start chasing your tail because you, you proceed, you test the, the socketable stuff first, usually on these boards. You whip the RAM out, go, oh, right, that's that's absolutely fine, no problems. And then you stick, uh, you start poking around with the logic probe, and then you chase your tail for several hours, which is exactly what I did. However, and we'll go to the schematics for uh, for this answer here. Gauntlet, Gauntlet 2 boards are pretty much the same thing. So this happens to be sheet 5. And what it's telling me is that location 16N slash P and 16M, I have two RAM chips, basically. And what happened was I looked here and I just saw 6116 and I thought, ah, right, must be 6116 RAM. Okay, no problems there. So I got out two spare 6116s, which I had, which I bought from, uh, from a place a, a while ago, and they tested good as well. And I popped them in. Let's show you what happens when you do that. So there's two RAM chips, uh, two alternative RAM chips stuck into the uh, into the board uh, out of my bits box. I'll speed through the thingy test, and this time it doesn't say RAM error. But notice the music chips test isn't working properly, and then you get issues. And the speech chip doesn't work quite as it should and things like that so you're thinking well it must be something to do with the board so then you start tracing lines and reflowing and changing sockets and all the rest of it and you spend three to four hours and the problem still doesn't go away and then you look at the data sheets for the ram because it occurs to you that the rams might be all different might be different there and the board might appear on the schematic when we pull it back over says hm6116 Hmm. So you go over to your computer and you type in HM6116 into your into Google or wherever you want to, whatever your preferred search provider is, and it gives you a data sheet. And then you look up the data sheets for uh, the RAMs that you've got there, and then you look up the data sheets for the original RAMs here. These um, sorry, these ones, and you find out that all the timings are different. And you think to yourself, so Atari must have meant for you to use a very specific chip. And the only hint that you've got about that, if you don't have an Atari engineer kicking around, is that it says HM6116. So the only thing I could realistically do was to sort of look up. Now, what I found was that these were a... And I'm not going to try and quote it word for word because I'm still not sure I've got, the, uh, got it right in my head. I think these are a lower speed RAM. Whereas the other ones are a higher speed RAM, and I think, by the sounds of it, because you think, well, hang on a minute, it shouldn't matter, it should clock down. <laughs> There's no clock sig signal being applied to it other than the CPU. 
and if you notice everything was kind of like all skew with and everything so if I go back around the circuit again here around the test mode still get nothing through the music chip test and what should happen is the effects chip effects test and everything should all be muddled up now yeah not doing exactly what it's supposed to do so in any case it's not right and what you find is that Atari and I don't know if it's specific to uh, Atari but to Gauntlet boards but certainly I know on other boards that they've done like pole position and missile command and a few others they've kind of made some of the circuits timing dependent on the chip timings so they've said oh well we know it's going to take 100 nanoseconds for the RAM to access and propagate onto the data and all the rest of it so what we'll do is we'll use that as part of the timing for something when they I suppose it was uh, Steve Wozniak who started that process of hey listen just um, you can emit a few chips by using the timing and I think that's how on the super breakout board he got uh, to use less chip uh, however many chips less it was anyway so the cautionary tale is here when you're trying to when you try to find a RAM fault uh, on a board make sure that you've got the correct timings at the circuit that is supposed to have a chip in it has the correct uh, isn't de isn't timing dependent on the chip itself so in this case what I had to do is order two uh, 6116 HMP hyphen 2s which are a certainly yeah these are the 100 to 120 nanosecond access time ones uh, from somebody I was lucky to find two left in the UK at the time uh, the guy says he will have some more sh soon um, and get these he's arrived this morning and popped in and what we'll do is we'll pop them back in and I'll show you what the uh, what it should do so straight away switch the board off pause the camera and we'll swap them back in and there's the new 616 6116s the HM ones back in the board so what we'll do now is point at the screen switch on wait for it to boot up okay here we go And straight away we're getting the music chip test exactly as it should be. Speech chip test? Absolutely spot on. That's exactly what I would expect it to do. That's what a normal board should do. Uh, by the way, if, you t if the CPU isn't working, you get a completely different error message. So if you ever come across this problem with RAM error, that's where you want to look. These boards were bought as part of a set when we bought a gauntlet, uh, a couple of gauntlet two cabs to uh, to make at least one worker from. So we got some boards, and the, the guy said, "Oh well, it uh, seems to say there's a uh, there's the same problem." Was uh, was the description that you get? So and uh, to be fair, he's tried to replace, he's tried to fix it by putting two two brand new 6116s in um, that would have caught me out I only know about this issue having had um, experience of recently of a pole position fault uh, where part of the fault turned out to be the uh, the Dallas RAM the uh, NV RAM on the board which is a 6116 as well had stopped working properly and we tested the RAM on the on the tester over here and it said it was good uh, so I'd kind of gone past it and the board just would not boot at all and there's a quite a big uh, thread on one of the forums me discussing it and nobody else seems to be able to know what's going on because it's obviously quite a hectic fault and normally it's you know check the CPU, uh, here's the watchdog running, uh, um, yes the watchdog circuit is working correctly, the watchdog is pulsing therefore it can't read memory and execute code or something like that, there's some kind of problem with that side of it so you, you, you start on one side of it and then you work on two, anyway that's a, a more advanced board repair kind of topic and it turned out that the person who had this board had obviously tried to fix it by putting two new RAM chips into it and still had problems with it and then got rid of the board and it turned out to be that so two new 6116 P2s into it and it's working absolutely fine right another job done another goal at board repaired and that one's we can put back on the shelf for stock um, this weekend I am out with a group at Hack Manchester with about nine, nine or so machines uh, down in a museum of science and industry come down and see us the event is unbelievably cool to get into uh, it's got they've got various challenges on building things uh, with modern day kit and they've asked us to bring some arcade machines for people to uh, enjoy as well so uh, check out the uh, check out the links in the description and uh, hopefully some of you will pop down and come and say hello all right so till the next video which will be up very soon i'll see you soon cheers <laughs>